Welcome to the madhouse! <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? We're back with another episode of East vs. West, where Orlando is opening up this week. Uh, as of this recording, it's not open, or they're having an employee preview night. Eddie will be there tomorrow, right, Eddie? Does it open up tomorrow? Yeah. It opens no, up. It doesn't open tomorrow. It opens Friday the 6th, but yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. I was supposed to be there today if that damn hurricane didn't delay my, my flight. Yeah. Uh, luckily enough, we, it's just one day delay, so I'll be there before the event starts regardless. Are you uh, doing media this year? Unfortunately, not. It fell through the last minute, but I'll be doing plenty of coverage. Plenty. Will you be collabing with Losh? Absolutely. Yeah, I might. I might uh, actually collab with Losh tomorrow, and uh, bring him like a. I don't know. Uh, what, what's that? The the like uh, Rosetta Stone, so he can learn how to pronounce Yukon. That's me. Yukon. That's mean. <laughs> that is mean. No, no, you I, are I, a mean person. I say it, I say it with love. It's, a, it's his ninth language. So You are a mean person. It's, it's his language. ninth language? He really speaks nine languages? No, stupid. It's a, it's like joke. a joke. Every time I say it, I say more languages. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And Sammy's stupid I, enough I, to believe it. I, yeah, I, I released another video today, and I, and I was like, yeah, forgive him. It's his sixth language. I've said it in, like my, in our last, like, Three podcasts and my last like four videos. <laughs> have I not caught this? Yeah, you haven't, obviously. <laughs> Every um, time I, I add an extra language. <laughs> but nonetheless, he's up to twelve. <laughs> we are here talking about uh, mo our most anticipated scare zones. We are sweating over here at the night support because we're in a fucking hot ass garage and it is hot in California. And it's hot in California. Um, so yeah. Anyway, we are here talking about this week our top five most anticipated scare zones on both respective coasts. We're going to do the same format we did last week where we, I went, then Eddie went, then Eddie went, then I went. Um, and then this time we have Sammy. So Sammy will go when I go, and then Eddie will go. Um, we have different scare zones, so none of the scare zones are the <coughs> same. So it's interesting to see how everyone's going to rank their scare zones this year. Um, if you guys caught last week's video, we did our top ten most anticipated HHN mazes, so go yeah. check that out. Link is in the bio below for that video. Definitely go check out that uh, episode of Use vs. West if you want to hype yourself up for HHN yeah. 2019. Or watch our Mindless War podcast. Oh, yeah. Shameless plug for my uh, so, top 10. Yeah, uh, Sammy couldn't make East vs. West last week, so when we recorded the podcast, he put up his top 10 most anticipated HHN uh, maze list. And yeah, so go check that out if you want to go see that. Just actually premiered tonight. And don't forget what this podcast is. It's your dose of both, both coasts. <laughs> Coming soon on a t-shirt. I don't know when. Yeah, I'm man, we got to say that at the beginning. The, the only both coast. The only podcast. The both coast. Yeah. The, both, the podcast where you can go a little mad sometimes and get Eddie Taint at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, with number five, obviously. So, number like I said, five. we all got our, our our list. I already know what Eddie's number five is going to be. So, I mean, there's no point of fucking me even. I could just skip his number five. I already know what it's going to be. But An arcade? Yeah, yeah. No, I already know what his number five is. But, Eddie, go ahead and kick us off with number five. All right. Don't assume that you know things. I'm I know. I know you. it because all you do is talk shit. So, I know it. I'm... I'm gonna surprise you with this one. So, it's not what you think. It's Rob Zombie's Hillbilly Deluxe. <laughs> if you're gonna say it, say it right. It's Hellbilly Deluxe. <laughs> not really, whatever. All right, so, all right, and let me let me defend myself here a little bit. So first and foremost, this guy has two properties this year. He has uh, a maze as well as a scare zone. and. Uh, the scare zone, although it sounds like it may be cool, maybe, but at the end of the day, he's got two properties. He's wasting our, our space. Get it could have been somebody out. else. Get the fuck um, out. He's but, got the Dracula car there, dude. Come on. We'll, we'll see. We'll I see. saw that, the fucking construction. 
yeah, yeah. Watch it become his favorite yeah. maze. Watch, watch it become his favorite, his favorite scares on watch. Favorite scares on watch. I mean the so like the the monsters and everything associated with the album seem pretty intriguing. So it could be potentially a good scare zone. But at this very point in time, from a hypeless perspective, I am not hyped for it. Um, I feel like it's redundancy with content that we're receiving in Orlando. So I mean, we'll see. Eddie, aren't you like thirty? Wasn't fucking Rob Zombie big when you came around? Were you in high school? When I was in high school, I was like really into rap. Oh God, that explains a lot. And I diversify up to like I got out of high school. Eddie, that was like your era. Rob Zombie came out around your era. Whatever. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I already saw that coming. Was it what you thought? Was it what you thought? Uh, it was definitely what I thought. It was exactly <laughs> what I thought. I knew it. Um, we have the same list, don't we? Yeah, we have the exact okay. same list, so it doesn't even matter. So our number five is going to be Toxic Tunnel. With three X's! With three X's, because, you know, third time's a charm. Um, this is the third year. For me, this is my reason why, I don't, why it's on the bottom of my list. This is the third year the Scare Zone is coming back. Um, it's the tunnel between the lower lot and then it connects to the metro sets. So that's the only way you can get back to the metro sets. So the reason why I'm putting this below on my on my top five anticipated is because like I've already seen this scare zone. Yeah. The only thing they do is they change the masks that they wear. Yeah. But it, essentially, it's the same storyline of of course these workers were working in a tunnel and uh, something broke out and it infected them and now they're these monsters. So it's basically the same thing. Um, but I do the only reason I, I do somewhat like it is because the scare actors who go in there day in day out have a good time with the space they have available to them awesome so that's what kind of saves it for me yeah I think I'm on the same page as Tony because if I want to watch this scare zone just uh, find a neighborhood YouTube channel and watch them walk through it there you go so I mean there's that obviously it's different when you get to experience it but it's it's third time so that's where I'm at. Um, moving on, number four, Dark Christmas. Um, this is about the fourth or fifth time they've done a Christmas scare zone. Yeah. Um, but this one's going to be ending holidays in hell, so it's technically part of the maze as well. But this is going to be the scare zone on French Street. So when you walk out of the holidays in hell maze, this will be the scare zone that you go to. Um, am I looking forward to it? Mm, we'll see. Um, I loved Holidays in Hell, the scare zone last year. Obviously, um, it did a great job because it's coming as a maze. Yeah, so I can't wait to see what um, the scare zone is going to have in it. But I'm kind of getting the little Halloween evil Christmas out. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree that they've done Christmas many times. Many times. You can only do Christmas so yeah. much. That and it's kind of like it's a Holidays in Hell 2.0. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that's. You, I mean, guys that's have a lot of like, uh, you guys have a lot of holiday themed stuff this year yeah um i i guess murdy s likes to twist holidays and he sees like a lot of like vintage postcards from like the uh, victorian area di yeah from different like you know countries and stuff like scotland and ireland and all that and he sees these like how scary they look so he likes to put his twist on them and make them even scarier mm -hmm. so um i mean if you look at the facade for holidays and how it's literally a postcard with like a demon baby and father time and yeah. like skeletons doing cheers to like new years and stuff so and then krampus i believe so yeah, yeah it's 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 and that's the, that's the cool thing that's going to be about this maze which every holiday that you go to is going to be a different uh twisted postcard so it's going to be it's going to look cool so but yeah. <laughs> nonetheless dark christmas um we'll see yeah I, I didn't and really to be honest anywhere between four and two are kind of almost tied in my book um, so, I mean, any of these, depending on how I felt, I could really have labeled any of these four through two. Yeah. All right, Eddie, you're number four. All right, so my number four is Anarchade. And although I do like the idea, and I've seen some of the construction uh, updates, the, the setup looks pretty cool. But just from history, the, the scare zone between uh, Shrek and Minions tends to be the more photo friendly so it tends to be the one that I don't really enjoy as much don't get me wrong I like taking photos I like the photo ops and whatnot but it tends to not be a scare zone it's just like a photo op area um, this scare zone seems to be kind of taking a turn for the better trying to get us away from that photo op type of scare zone but 
from the from history from that I that I remember, always the the scare zone in between Shrek and uh, Minions tends to be the worst one of the event, and that's where this one is located. So that simple fact kind of has me turned off a little bit about it. Even though I do like the the like uh, the idea that they have um, certain individuals that are going to have like neon light suits and all that stuff. So it, it could turn out to be better than I than I think, but at the moment. I, I don't have very high hopes for it. Um, uh, you want me to do my number three? Transition to number three. Number three. All right. Numero tres. All right. For in guys. vivo. Yeah, in vivo. Telemundo. No. <laughs> Telemundo. <laughs> my, <laughs> it is universal, so we can. Yeah. My my number three is, and then from this point on, I, I really do like the next three a lot. Um, so I, I just put them in this order because. The number one is definitely the one that I love the most. But uh, Vikings Undead. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I said it in in another podcast that we did that Vikings Undead gives me kind of like a, that Game of Thrones type of feel. Yeah. Um, the White Walkers. So I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to seeing a, a an approach at these dead Vikings that kind of makes them look like White Walkers, as well as these like ship facades that I've seen already put up. I'm not sure if you've seen the construction. I've seen video. them. They look they look cool. It looks like it's different pieces of a ship. You got the back part and then the front part, and you're like in the middle of it, so it looks pretty. Yeah, cool. yeah. So it, it does look really cool. And and then from history, this area tends to be usually a pretty good scare zone. If if my memory serves me right, this is the same area where Trick or Treat was. Before. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think this is yeah the same. It looked like the same area where Trick or Treat was in the past. Exactly, and that area tends to be one of the better ones because it has uh, a lot of like trees and whatnot looming. So like you get a really cool effect of like darkness and the fog kind of like has a has a, a way of staying confined. So it, it gets really hard to see in those areas. So I could see um, some really good scares coming from Vikings Undead. Definitely. Um, now we're gonna transition to Hollywood's number three, which is our, our at least our number three. Yeah. Fallen Angels. Fallen Angels. With a Z and the Angels. I don't know why Murdy does that. He does because he wanted to piss people yeah, off. Yeah, to piss people off essentially, and and he said that in the Midsummer Screen <laughs> panel, um, and he said that he said that time and time before. But uh, Fallen Angels, uh, it definitely is reminiscent to me to uh, Doctor Who, of the uh, the Scream Angel <laughs> statues that will like you know once you look away and stuff they like get closer and closer, and if you take your eye off them like they'll kill you uh, I've never seen Doctor Who well I've seen a, a couple episodes but I've never seen that but if you yeah if you ever look that up I, I forget what they're called but yeah they, they look reminiscent to that um, however I am I, I, I mean I saw the masks they did they, they post on Twitter today I'm no. not really a fan of them but I, I mean they, they, they're nice artwork yeah the nice artwork I really enjoy the artwork but I got to see more of this but um it also does sound like a really cool concept, like Fallen Angels. When you think of a Fallen Angel, you think of hell. Yeah. So you think of, like, demonic uh, creatures and stuff like that, which... And they're going to have chainsaws, right? Yeah, the, the, this is usually the scares. I think this is this is the scare zone that's going to be from the front gate all the way to the Universal Plaza. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that area usually has chainsaws, so that will be pretty cool to see. I'm going to hate that because I hate loud noises. Do you? Loud noises. Loud noises. Uh, um, and this is the reason why I'm putting this one at three... It's because I would have loved to have something else there. Us. No, no you want you want us where spirits and demons of the east of that. Is that where the opening ceremony is? Yes. But is it? Is it that uh, Fallen Angels is the opening ceremony? Or yeah. is it like spirits, spirits and, and demons? demons of the east. Yeah, I mean, I would have... I, I just don't know how I feel about Fallen Angels. It's kind of just like... Well, I don't know how they're doing opening ceremony this year. Last year, the last couple years that they've had Harry Potter Land, they've done it right in front of the entrance of Harry Potter land. Yeah. Um, so I don't know where it's going to be at. I, I, I'm assuming it's going to be in the same area, and if that's true, then it's going to be Spirits of the Demons of the East. Yeah, it's... What do they do with Harry Potter land? Is it open? So in the past, it hasn't. Um, but I th- I've heard rumors this year that they were going to open it up and put Dementors in it. If they did, that would be so cool. Um, so this year, um, at least in Orlando, they're, they are going to be open. Um, but it, it's not themed. So J.K. Rowling has a strong grip on that. Within the U.S., we cannot do anything uh, themed at any of the U.S.-based parks. Um, Halloween themed, that is, in, in those areas. But this year, I think, is going to be the first time that they're allowing it to be open so that we could actually ride the ride during Halloween Horror Nights. And there's also going to be like a space where we kind of remove ourselves from the Halloween event if we need like a quick break. Mm-hmm. But I, I believe... 
Uh, contractually, J.K. Rowling has that in a tight little bow. It cannot be done um, at any of the U.S.-based parks. But my understanding is at the other parks, they do have Dementors, which is dope. Uh, yeah, and I think that it's going to be smart for them to open uh, Harry Potter Land in Orlando during the event this year because they just launched that new Hagrid ride. So that's going to probably yeah. take some crowds away from mazes maybe. Um, it might be an equal opportunity for crowds. So Yeah, I hope it is open. That way I can escape. I mean, <laughs> oh, I get to experience Butterbeer. Butterbeer. But, oh, yeah, yeah if, if you're in the Orlando area and if that's true, or, yeah, Eddie says it's true, so it must be true. Because um, Eddie knows all. Eddie knows all, right? Well, and the the Hagrid ride is also not at Universal Studios. It's at Islands of Adventure, so we won't be able to ride it oh. while we're going to Halloween Horror Nights regardless. But this year, I, I believe, uh, for Halloween Horror Nights, the Islands of Adventure is going to have the, the like Dark Arts uh, Castle show. Yeah. Which I think you guys already have. Yeah, well, I haven't seen it, but I think I don't know if it's still going on or anything. But I gotta check that out. Yeah, I've seen videos of it, but it looks pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. All right, transitioning to our number two, All Hallows Evil. Yeah. So this is gonna be a scare zone that takes us to the Metro sets, to uh, Creepshow, Ghostbusters, and uh, Universal Monsters, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Um, this one, I've when I went to the park this last week to do construction update. This one looked really like it was gonna be a good scare zone. Usually, this scare zone never ceases to fail yeah. in my opinion um everything they've done in that scare zone from like the purge to uh, uh holidays in hell to now this is going to be all hallows evil never really fails and it's it's almost like a maze of its own if you think about it because you got to kind of walk through it and stuff like that which it's almost like a little maze which is pretty cool so that's cool i'm really looking forward to seeing this especially because they when murdy went into detail about it it sounded very like a very interesting concept so I can't wait to walk through it. And it's going to be based on, like, old-time Halloween. Like, yeah. You know, like the scary pictures you see on the internet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's another cool concept for it. Yeah, and I think that's why it's kind of labeled higher for me. It's because I think it's going to be terrifying. Yeah. Not as terrifying as number one. Yeah. <laughs> but, we'll get there. But, uh, Eddie. But uh, it's pretty terrifying. Number two for you. All righty, guys. So number two for me is, once again, another one that I'm really looking forward to, which is Zombieland Double Tap. Perfect spot uh, for it. What's that? Perfect spot for it. Number two, because a double yeah. tap. Hey, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah. Good job there, Sam boy. Now, now I know why we bring you on this on the podcast. No. I, I understand. It, it all makes sense it, now. Everything is clear now. But <laughs> <laughs> Zombieland Double Tap is a movie that I really enjoy. I'm looking forward to the sequel as well. Um, so for that simple fact, and also I've seen a, a couple of the updates um, that, that, that have been posted for the construction with the drop tower and uh, some of the, the like sets that they're, that they're putting in the, in the area look really cool. It's, it looks like it's going to be really well themed to what the movie was like. We already seen Zombieland too. Yeah, I know. You said, quit, quit trying to slip that in there, right? Cool guy. <laughs> That's all I'm saying at the moment. I know. I, I, was, I, I, thought, you, I thought you were giving me this to say nothing. That's all I can say. Yeah. That's all I signed. I may have walked into a movie. Yep. <laughs> um, and then um, I can say this, though. If you love the first one, you're going to like the second one. Yeah. Cool. Transitioning to my numero uno and Ooh. last scare zone for Orlando is Vanity Ball. Um, Vanity Ball is one that I'm really looking forward to. The more I've read up on it, the, the cooler it sounds. We're, we're going to have, like, um, in the Hollywood area, it's going to be uh, basically plastic surgery going on with willing participants, and these plastic surgeons are trying to make art out of these willing participants. So I'm going to assume, like, in the past, this area usually has, like, a stage show. Yeah. So there will be a stage show of somebody – having plastic surgery performed on them which will probably seem pretty gruesome but will bring Halloween Horror Nights back to its original uh, feel of horror, like real horror not that PG stuff that a lot of people have been complaining about so I'm really looking forward to this particular scare zone. Um, I also saw there's some some uh, windows, um, I was watching Tim Tracker's recent update and there's some windows set up with some lighting, lighting around it and currently those windows have mannequins in them but potentially they could remove those mannequins and put scare actors in there to also be having like different different like procedures performed on them within like a glass confinement. Definitely. Sounds yeah, I definitely I agree that that it'll be really cool to watch someone have surgery. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, and it definitely does remind me because I was watching a video of 
the history of Halloween Horror Nights, and they definitely did do a lot of shows at one yeah. point with their icons. Yeah, that were absolutely. pretty gruesome. <laughs> I hope you're watching my video. I didn't, I didn't come across yours, but oh, I'll find it. Oh, Slap wow. in the face. Wow. I watched it, Eddie. I watched it. <laughs> at least one half of the Night's Horror is keeping up around here. There we go. Anyway, the fir- the last and final scare zone that we are most anticipated for after looking at the concept art of just one still walker just sold <laughs> me and Sammy immediately. Completely. And that is Spirits and Demons of the East. Now, this is going to be from the Universal Plaza all the way to the entrance to um, Harry Potter Land. And this scare zone is going to be terrifying. You got a lot of influence of the East uh, coming in. Yeah. And... There's this one stilt walker that she looks reminiscent to, like, if the grudge and the ring had a, a baby, baby, and it was a tall ass baby on stilt walkers going on all fours. It just looks terrifying. Yeah. I vividly remember the panel like it was yesterday. <laughs> We're sitting in there and freaking, you know, the picture comes up and you just hear one guy. It was quiet and then you just hear the one guy. Oh fuck! And. uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, a- after hearing that, I was like, oh, this is going to be a good scare zone. So I'm very much looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, I really, I mean, I know that they don't want you to take pictures and things like that, but if I can get a picture with one of those stilt walkers. You probably won't get a picture yourself, but you could take one. Like, like I'll kind of just be there, then like they'll be behind me somewhere. That'd be sick. They're going to scare the shit out yeah. of me. I know. And I'm going to put myself. Yeah. But it's okay because that's what we're there for, right? To be scared. Um, yeah. So, still walkers me. and scare zones are amazing. Uh, once it reminds me of uh, once upon a time we had the uh, event at Islands of Adventure, which hasn't happened in a really long time. Yeah. And Jurassic Park area, you know how like you have like the entrance to Jurassic Park, it's like the stone walls with the wooden doors. Up against the stone walls, there were stilt walkers, but their whole entire outfit look like stone so what they would do is they would lay up against the wall and then when people were, were passing by they would come out and they'd be like ah and that shit was amazing I, I freaking love that 100% they caught a bunch of people because their it's their whole entire outfit basically blent them into the, the stone wall yeah uh, so yeah the event is looking pretty stacked this year from yeah. both scare zones to um, mazes and we can't wait uh, it opens in Hollywood September 13th uh or September 12th for fan preview. Pre- fan preview. Uh, it opened in Orlando as of this recording tonight for employee. an employee preview night, and it opens, what, tomorrow for regular? No, 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 Friday. The Friday. Sunday. Eddie will be there opening night with Lost TV, so go find them. Find Take them. a picture with them. Hang out with them. And tell them you have been Eddie Tame. Tell them you have been Eddie. Tell them the Knights of Horse sent you all the way from the West Coast. Yeah. So it, it'll be crazy if I get identified by anybody that at Halloween Horror Nights. But if it does happen, if you see me out there, um, I may not know how to act because it doesn't happen to me too often, but you are more than welcome to come say hi. I'm more than happy to take a picture, even though I'm probably not that famous or popular yet, just yet, but it's that'd okay. be cool. And tell him that he needs to bring back kicks and whips. Yeah. God. Make sure to drop that. Make sure like to specify, like, hey, kicks and whips, I want to see that. Let's bring that back. <laughs> um, but no. Uh, yeah, we'll be at the event. Or me, Tammy, uh, Fosto will be with us. Fosto Pebbles. And Ashley will all be at the event um, September 13th. And then we're going to plan another day to go with this guy. So should be fun. Um, Halloween Horror Nights is here. And we are excited. Definitely. So, it's finally here. That's freaking crazy. Yep. After a year of East versus West of talking about mazes, talking about scare zones, anticipated mazes, anticipated scare zones. We're finally at the event where we're, we're going to eventually be making our video of what we thought of the event, our top yeah. favorite mazes, favorite scare zones. Yeah. Um, it's all coming in the next couple of weeks, so be on the lookout for your dose of both coasts only on East versus West. How many times are you going, Eddie? Three. I'm going Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Wow. Nice. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So you're going to try to do like one section of the park and then you're going to like kind of do it like that or? So uh, the first night, I'm going to try to do everything. Damn, yeah. I smacked my mic. <laughs> I'm going to try to do everything. The second night, I'm going to try to be a little bit more focused on what I'm going to see. So probably going to going to do like a good overview of the scare zones and maybe mix in like the merchandise as well. Um And then the, the third night, I'm just going to go back and try to film the whole entire thing. Maybe... The third night, I may just leave the camera at home and just go enjoy it 100% on Definitely. my own. Definitely. 
Um, are you doing any express or are you all GA? No. So the well, yes. The the first night I'm doing express. I might do uh, uh, one of the tours, uh, the RIP tours. Yeah. Um, which if you haven't done one before, I highly recommend. Uh, last year I did it with the with the media event, and this year unfortunately I don't have media access, but the the RIP tours were really freaking cool. It's a it's a great experience. I mean, it, it lives up to the VIP experience type of name. Um, and if you have that extra money, it's probably going to be like an extra like eighty bucks to hundred bucks, depending on the night that you go. Um, I would definitely recommend it. But I'm doing the the speed pass for sure at minimum, um, but maybe an RIP tour. Nice. Sounds good. So catch Eddie and like I said, Losh and Zombie Chris. I don't know. If, I don't know what day Zombie Chris is going, but catch him at the event this year. I don't think he's going to opening weekend because he he said that he's turning off his social media so that nobody messes it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and then catch us opening day, um, not fan preview night. Opening day, the official opening day. Official. Yeah, official. Uh, we'll be there with Fosto, hanging out, saying hi to everyone, going through mazes. Overall, and just enjoying the event. I can't wait. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this. Let's yeah. go. Let's get scared. Let's, let's go get our own dose. Let's go get our own <laughs> dose. So, yeah. like I said, be sure to keep up with East versus West. It's going to be coming in hot with, of course, reviews of the events. Uh, we're probably going to do our annual Not Scary Farm versus Bush Gardens one pretty soon, so be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Um, when Eddie gets back into town, he'll probably plan something with Bush Gardens pretty soon. And oh, I know yeah, yeah. We're, we're planning I'm something actually, with Knots. Sorry. Yeah. I'm actually – when you guys are going for opening night, I'm going for uh, what's it called? The annual pass holder event yeah. at Bush Gardens Williamsburg for Halloween Scream. So on the 13th, you guys will be at ha uh, Halloween Horror Nights. I'll be at Halloween Scream. So next week, we'll, we'll do some East versus West, Knots versus Bush Gardens, uh, breaking down all the mazes, scare zones that are going to be there. And yeah. After he goes shows. to the announcement event, obviously. No, are you going to the announcement? Is it the announcement event or opening night? So it's it's uh, the annual pass holder event. So only pass holders are in. So it's like a early fan preview. Oh, okay. Yeah, so oh, this is like a fan preview. So it's the fan preview. So we'll be uh, doing that next week on the channel. We'll be talking about Knott's versus Bush Garden. So stay tuned for that. Everybody, thank you so much for the constant support of East versus West. Thank you so much for 500 subscribers on the way to 600. And uh, go subscribe to Eddie because Eddie's going to be busting out that Orlando content like crazy, that yeah. East Coast content um, with our boys, Lost TV as well. You're going to be seeing some collabs on the East Coast. You'll be seeing collabs on the West Coast. And hopefully next year you're going to be seeing collabs on both coasts. Because this is the only podcast where you can get your dose of both coasts. So... <laughs> like I say in every at the end of every uh, video, just because I, I like to throw it out there because it's on my channel and I, you know I have to throw it out there. Don't forget to ask yourselves: Have you been Eddie tamed? <laughs> we'll we'll see you guys at the event. <laughs>